back here at beautiful Christ Cathedral on top of the Tower of Hope talking about praising God with young adults and praising God through young adult music and we're with Brian Guadardo and Jeff Acton and we're talking about really how young adults think differently as it relates to music and Jeff why don't you kick it off you've been uh, kind of a student of music in so many different ways and you know, my generation, you know, we grew up uh, in, say, the 70s, 80s with different types of praise songs and so forth. But I noticed that the young adult praise songs seem to be different. And tell us about, about the praise songs that young adults are attracted to. Well, I think it all starts with our parents. Whatever they listen to obviously influences us. And so that being said, you have the traditional choir music going on in church usually. But then you start to hear guitars come in, which has been brought in in the last, what is it, few, 40 years, I would say, depending on the parish. And then that's where it really starts to go, oh, hey, there's guitar. And for people in my generation, a guitar added with, say, a piano or a drum kit really reverberates in their soul. They can feel it in more layers than just vocally or just with an, in one instrument, like a piano. Or even, you know, a different type of guitar, right? Because my generation, the older generation here, baby boomers, would be, what's it called, acoustic guitar? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and tell us more about about what types of, of music as well as, as uh, instruments right now for the young adults that would uh, appeal to them. Well, um, I think that young adults are kind of coming out of that, you know, teenage phase of, you know, the EDM or the pop or the rap uh, pulp, uh, feel of it and I think that sometimes when it comes to the young adults it doesn't even it, it's certain instruments like just simple guitars simple pianos simple strings uh, are a little more soothing to the soul you know and we're getting into that age the young adults are where we are uh, we're definitely getting into the grind of working and trying to establish ourselves and our families and we are uh, in this we're in this hustle you know to say the least and sometimes I feel like too much commotion and too much uh, involvement in uh, the instruments can sometimes uh, have us take a step back and realize, you know what, there's too much going on, I can't think. And uh, I think we're also seeking simplicity in music when it comes to the guitars, the, the vocals, the pianos, and um, less is more, at least for, for me, uh, sometimes when it comes to music and praising God. Uh, even the simple repetition of uh, certain words or phrases or sounds can be a meditative uh, way of, of praising God. You know? Jeff, in terms of the history as it relates to the evolution of young adult praise music, tell us more about that. Well, you have Matt Marr for one, and he's a wonderful Catholic artist, and he's taking it from some very complex stuff to so some very simple breakdowns where it's just him and acoustic, and that's it and then he might put in some electric and a full band. And then you have bands like Jesus Culture, where they take the vocals of it and just draw it out to some beautiful, spacey kind of stuff where it feels like you're praying with heaven. And when you have breakdowns of the two, it really flows to each different individual's person because the soul itself, I mean, we're all different. God created us all different, but all equal. And we need different types of praise to speak to each of us specifically. Praise the Lord. And just in general, music draws young adults uh, to attend Mass. And that's so important. And we're, we're here again on beautiful at beautiful Christ Cathedral on top of the Tower of Hope. And we're talking about praising God with young adults. And, and Brian, again, um, I think every pastor, every parish, every deacon like myself, and any any leader within the church they're asking the same question how can we get the young adults more involved in our parishes more regularly attending mass and special masses for young adults is that something that you have found uh, important I have um, there have been youth groups and uh, live team groups that have special masses at like a 5 p.m. live team mass where uh, somebody who doesn't go to mass often can relate to, to the sound of the music and I remember when I first uh, started in Life Teen, uh, Matt Marr was actually the artist uh, that my choir 
would sing a lot of and the song was just like you and just the first phrases in that song the first words opened my heart up and saying uh, revive my heart renew my soul in you O lord i am made whole and when you're really broken uh, coming out of a dark situation certain words or certain phrases just open up your heart and they break you down and you start build, rebuilding you up um, and i feel like uh, these life team masses or these young adult masses that are being established out there are definitely reaching out to our younger generation uh, no matter what they're going through and they're just saying hey we are universal and we are open to whatever situation you are we are here you know we are here as a church we are here to uh, to help you through whatever you're here Jeff you know one of the things that's so critical from my vantage point is just the incredible pressures on young adults as it relates to financial pressures, marriage, family, all kinds of things in which they'll often not necessarily put church as a priority versus other things in their life. How has music helped them in terms of putting Christ at the center of their priorities? You know, as we said, it speaks to the soul and it does remove you from where you're at for that moment. It separates you from whatever you're going through and helps you clear your head some of the stuff Brian was talking about earlier about it just relaxing from a hard day. And when you can get that separation, however it speaks to you, it's going to let you focus on something other than your daily duties, which is hopefully God. Amen. And, and Brian, how, how would you answer that as it relates to, you know, how does music again help young adults participate more in terms of, of really nourishing their soul and, and really uh, wanting to be part of our church. Well, um, I, I think young adults, young adults go through a lot of different phases, and it all depends. It's all relative. Maybe um, some young adults are like going through some hard times with family, and some are just questioning their existence or their purpose in life. You know, uh, and I find that praise music, at least for me, and it was one of my topics, was um, praise music often makes me look outside the window. You know. And when I look outside the window, I see the sky, and I see the clouds, and I see the sun, and I see God's creation, God's beauty. And I think that sometimes what we need to focus on as uh, young adults is not worry about how much money we made today or what the tasks, what our to-do list is. Um, but it, it definitely, whenever I hear a song, um, it definitely makes me look outside, you know, and it, it makes me think, okay, well, there's more out there than my situation, and I need to praise God for this day, this, this air that I'm breathing, you know. How would you define, for our listening audience, young adult music? What, what, what does that look like? Uh, young adult music, I mean, I think there's, because of our age group, um, there's a little more of a serious tone starting to, I believe, uh, come about. Um, we got, you know, we have some hard rock, we have some it's a big mix, I think, you know, and from what I'm hearing out there, it's it's uh, a little more of the folk uh, is also bringing up, you know, a little more simplified folk and uh, just the groundy, at least for Christian music I'm hearing out there, there's a lot more uh, grounded instruments, and I think, you know, a lot of more grounded sounds, uh, violins, cellos, low drums, just very heartfelt, real sounds. It's interesting, uh, my wife, my beautiful wife, Marianne, hi Marianne, who's not here. Um, she and I talked about it after listening to you guys play, and then of course other groups that are of our generation play. And one thing she said, Jeff, was that she said, you know, it, the songs appear to be more serious, as you said, Brian, you know, more, um, in some ways it's, it's somewhat contemplative, but you know, rather than just, you know, really praising God with all your heart, soul, might, and strength, and hallelujah, uh, certainly there's some of that, but but there's really more content, it seems like, and, and more depth to it. Your thoughts? I had a pastor once tell me that I had to walk the line between charismatic and contemplative. And I know personally I've taken that to my songwriting too, in the sense of pouring out my soul, but at the same time, including God's soul too and trying to mix the two together to formulate a song. Well, we have, speaking of songs, we have a couple songs coming up that are gonna be uh, really exciting that you guys are gonna do on the air here. And we couldn't be more excited about that because music definitely soothes the soul. And, 
And when we are singing, uh, what type of participation are you looking for, Brian, when, when, you, when you're playing? Uh, when I play with any groups, uh, if they are just one with me, you know, if they lift their hand up and praise, you know, or if they are clapping during helping me with the beat, you know, because I usually don't play with a band, I just play by myself. And if they can also repeat the words with me, you know, like we are we are singing and praising as one unit, and uh, that is always uh, amazing for me. And I, it reminds me that I'm not here alone. I'm not by myself praising. You know, I'm with God and with God's people, and we are all praising God together. And Jeff, what about you in terms of? How do you get participation from the group when you you're part of a of a of a bigger group or several of them, yeah. and, and a few of them, and and how do you how do you know that you're really reaching your audience? Honestly, I look at them, and when I'm playing, I do close my eyes too, but I make sure to see where they're at and if we need to pump it up a little more and get a little more energy going or mellow it out a little bit so maybe they can focus on God more and less on us. Amen. And do you find getting them to stand, does that come into it at all? Or it can. Enough? Standing, kneeling, adoration. Yes. I mean, it, it really just depends on who's there and what they're going through. You mentioned adoration because that's been one of the big changes as it relates to the charismatic renewal, especially involving young adults, is, is really a strong desire for the Blessed Sacrament and adoration and, and, and relating to music. And tell us more about that. Well, it's that true presence. You can't deny it. Once you're there with music, the whole atmosphere changes. You can feel the Holy Spirit in the room. And I really do believe and know that everybody who goes feels something. And generally, they all leave happier and in a better place at peace. Hallelujah, this is Deacon Steve Greco. We're here at beautiful Christ Cathedral and we're talking about praising God with young adults and young adult music. And we have a treat. And so please, please listen in. We'll be right back after the break and we will actually hear these wonderful gentlemen sing and play their guitars. So we'll be right back.